Here in Wales, we are very lucky. We have some of the most beautiful landscapes in the British Isles. But this beautiful land of ours is coming under increasing pressure from our way of life. In particular, the food waste we throw away. This is how we currently deal with the problem. We bury it in holes in the ground known as landfill. And currently, for the Welsh taxpayer, it costs anything up to £100 for every tonne that we bury this way. And like everything else, the cost of this will only go up. And once we've buried our food waste in the ground, it rots and breaks down, producing methane, a powerful greenhouse gas which harms our environment. So the problem is an urgent one, with landfill space running out in Wales. At our current rate of use, we've got something like seven years of landfill capacity left. To put it into perspective, every year we bury 2.5 million tonnes of waste into the ground, the equivalent of six rugby pitches stacked to the depth of the Millennium Stadium. Nowadays, due to new technologies, there are far better ways of getting rid of our food waste that can help us tackle climate change and benefit our society. This is now the equivalent of sweeping the problem underneath the carpet. The fact is that we have to look at different solutions and develop an alternative to landfill. In this short film, we'll be looking at anaerobic digestion and how it provides an alternative to dumping our food waste into landfill and how it puts the food waste collected to good use. We'll be looking at how this technology is already working in other parts of the British Isles. And finally, we'll talk to the local residents about the impact of such a site and the benefits of anaerobic digestion. We have chosen to look at this anaerobic digestion plant as it is similar to the kind of facility that needs to be built in Wales. This is just one of 50 currently operating throughout the UK that are having a big impact on the quantity of food waste being sent to landfill sites and at the same time are providing real benefits to the local community. Anaerobic digestion converts our food waste into a gas that can provide us with renewable energy. It can generate electricity which can be exported to the national grid or it can produce heat and power for local use. This also produces a soil improver, which can be used on local land, or more often, for land reclamation. Anaerobic digestion plants take up relatively small amounts of space, typically between one to three hectares, which is the same as between two to seven acres. But they can process more than 30,000 tonnes of food waste every year, so saving acres of landfill space. And considering we only have seven years of landfill capacity left in Wales, this can only be good news. With Wales being the only country in the UK where all local councils provide a food waste collection service, households should now have one of these. It may differ in colour and shape where you live, but it's where we should all be putting our food waste. Each year in Wales, around 410,000 tonnes of food and drink waste is being produced by households alone, most of which, unfortunately, is still being sent to landfill. This equates to over £600 million worth of good food and drink being wasted. So we can all save some of our hard-earned cash by minimising the waste we produce in the first place. Anaerobic digestion offers a great opportunity for us to make the most out of the waste left over. So, how does an anaerobic digestion facility work? Food waste arrives at the plant. It's pre-treated and any remaining packaging is removed. It's then fed into the digestion tank. Here, the waste separates into the two main products. Firstly, there's methane, and rather than being released into our atmosphere, this gas is captured and used to power electricity generators. Over 90% of the electricity produced in this way is exported to the national grid, with the remainder being used by the plant itself. Alternatively, the methane can be cleaned up and used as a vehicle fuel or fed into the national gas supply for use by homes and businesses. There is also a very useful byproduct, heat. About a third of this is used to heat the AD plant itself, with the remainder often being used to warm local factories and other buildings, making the whole process almost self-sufficient in power and heat. With the UK committed to a target of 15% of electricity from renewable sources by 2020, anaerobic digestion plants are already supplying both renewable electricity and renewable heat. And, unlike wind power and solar energy, they can run whatever the weather, day or night. There's also a useful secondary product which comes from anaerobic digestion. This is a digest that sinks to the bottom of the tank, which is rich in nutrients and nitrogen, which can be used as a soil improver. 
And with the cost of fertilizer going up all of the time, this is a great way of returning nutrients to the land. Alternatively, in other parts of the country, the digest is being used in land reclamation. So that's how this type of facility works. But what about its impact on the local area and community? I think initially it was a matter of um, what is a biodigester? What is this? How is it? Is it going to affect us? Or um, sounds a bit smelly? And then when the publicity started coming out about what it was, um, I think people settled down quite quickly. They did a lot of uh, presentations to local groups in the early, early stages and that was very good to uh, assure people that it was good for the community. So we made sure that we had drop-in sessions, we, had, we leafleted, uh, and in fact the portfolio holder did lots of the leaflet, leafleting herself to make sure that people had the full facts. The most of the negative aspects that came out of it were about the collection methodology rather than the plant itself. Because when we started the consultation exercise, it really wasn't a surprise to the local community that this thing was going to go ahead, or we were applying for permission for it to go ahead, because there had been a lot of publicity about all the R&D works which, which had predated it, and also about the way that the two parties were working together. So we didn't get people coming in really surprised at this project landing, because there had been a lot of sort of advanced talk about it. I think the impact of these is, is on people's sort of consciousness, really. What, I, what I've noticed is that people are much more aware now of what they're doing with, with all their waste in general, not just food waste, but um, you know, all their green waste and, and other waste, and it, it links in with other recycling schemes as well. Food waste, I think, um, is something which people, people didn't really think about very much. You know, they, they'll collect their bottles and cans and cardboard and that sort of stuff, but food waste, oh, no, you just throw it away, don't you? You know, a few people have compost heaps in their, in their gardens, but for the majority of residents, I think, you know, to learn, to understand that this waste product, you know, can be used for something, something very worthwhile was a, was a, you know, a great eye-opener to, to a lot of the residents. As a process for dealing with our food waste, anaerobic digestion is very efficient, producing electricity, heat and soil improvers. But it's very easy to think that by using this modern technology, we have cracked the problem. The truth is, there's more heat, power and soil improvers to be had out there if we all use these as often and as much as possible. If we all do our bit, then modern technology can do the rest. Landfill is simply not an option for the future. It can cause problems of odour, dust and vermin. It can pollute our watercourses and it releases harmful greenhouse gases. It also means that we waste valuable natural resources. As a treatment for the food we waste, anaerobic digestion offers a great solution and a real alternative to this.